All right. So um, I so good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're officially past the the noon hour. Um, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to be here today for our April Lunch and Learn um, featuring careers in book publishing. We are so grateful uh, to have the expertise of Terry Deal uh, here with us today uh, for this presentation. Um, so how this is going to go is I'm just going to introduce Terry really quickly. Um, I'll, I'll be reading her bio. Um, I ask that all of you throughout the presentation, if you have questions, please put them in the chat or in the q and I'll be monitoring it throughout the webinar. Um, and after we go through Terry's bio, I'll hand it over to her. Um, so just really quickly to introduce uh, Terry, uh, she is the Assistant Director of of production editorial at Random House Publishing Group, which is a division of Penguin Random House, a freelance copy editor and proofreader, and an adjunct faculty member at NYU School of Professional Studies. An Italian Irish mutt, Terry was born in Philadelphia and grew up in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. She cried for her first book, A Collection of Fairy Tales, at the age of six, and thus began her fascination with storytelling and the written word. She defected from the College of Agriculture in the spring of her freshman year at Penn State and became an utterly undistinguished English major. Without a substitute, substitutive experience in just about everything and no publishing industry uh, acumen or connections, Terry made uh, unsuccessful attempts at getting her entry level positions at TV Guide, Ladies Home Journal, and Rodale Books, to name a few of her rejections in the pre internet 90s. She began her career as an administrative slash editorial assistant for a five person publisher of a monthly newspaper for doctors in Narberth, Pennsylvania, and switched jobs within the magazine and book publishing worlds every few years until she was hired after interviewing four times over two years as a senior production editor at the tiny but mighty crown publishing group, a new defunct division of Penguin Random House. Her work consists of managing the editorial process from the moment a manuscript is ready for copy editing to the point the book is queued up to be printed. For 10 years, she worked on a diverse list of books, including popular and literary fiction, memoirs, business, current affairs, self-help, interior design, and cookbooks. When Crown was absorbed into Random House Publishing Group in late 2018, Terry became a part of the group that works exclusively on Clarkson Potter, uh, Harmony, and Rodale imprints, where she is assigned to 25 titles per year, covering cooking, wine, and cocktails, baking, health and wellness, pop culture, interior design, memoir, self-help, and even coloring books and puzzles. Authors uh, she and her freelancers have saved from making tragic mistakes, including Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Sherry Fink, writer, actress and producer Mindy Kaling, uh, American entrepreneur Eric Rise, poet, actress and wearer of traveling pants Amber Tamblin, <laughs> MSNBC's Chris Hayes, homekeeping and lifestyle legend Martha Stewart and the barefoot Contessa herself, Ina Garten. As a freelance copy editor and proofreader, Terry has worked on way too many uh, Swedish crime novels, she says, and she teaches a course, uh, Editorial Fundamentals at NYU School of Professional Studies um, and an MS in Publishing Program. Her first favorite novel is Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. Her first favorite memoir is Dancing on My Grave by uh, Geisley Kirkland. Her latest favorite nonfiction is Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. And her latest favorite fiction is Anything by Lauren Groff. So I want to please give the warmest welcome to Terry Deal, um, who will take it away from here. Thank you so much, Terry. Thanks for having me. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to look at a, a PowerPoint um, that I hope is interesting and informative. We're going to talk about book publishing, the roles you might um, uh, apply for as an entry level um, professional. And uh, we can uh, stop for questions or we'll do a bunch of questions at the end. Uh, but let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, as Lauren mentioned, um, 
I work at Random House. Oh, I'm so sorry, Terry. Um, I, it looks like we're seeing um, the back end of your slideshow um, rather than the full slide. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, is that not working? Um, no? we, we can see it. We can just see all of your notes and everything. So I didn't know if you wanted to try to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me stop that. Sorry, everybody. You know, as I was saying before, I was like crowing about my, my zoom teaching experience, um, which I guess is not so great. Um, sorry. Oh my gosh. Uh, no worries. Take your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Uh, how's that? We're good to go. Thank you. Yep. Right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Terry. Uh, sense of humor necessary for everything in life. Um, okay. So yeah, um, careers in book publishing, and I. I'm an assistant director of the production editorial department um, at Random House Publishing Group. Um, it's all about storytelling. If you love stories and telling stories and bringing people's voices um, to the world, you might become a book publishing professional. Um, so my career path, as we uh, have just discussed a very little bit, um, Started out as an editorial assistant after I graduated from Penn State. Um, I was mostly doing administrative things, but I was able to get um, a good look at the editorial process because the office was so small. So don't discount small places um, for your first job because you get to do a lot of things that you might not be able to do at a larger place. Um, I moved on to a magazine group in Princeton where I did a lot of um, writing and editing of career um, advice for engineers and computer science students. Um, and after that, I jumped to my first job in New York City um, and worked on custom magazines and book projects with a small company called Bishop Books that um, was uh, contracted by larger um, companies to do projects for them. So I was able to work on uh, Time Life books, uh, books for the New York Times, um, books for Sports Illustrated uh, uh, while working in a small environment. Again, like having a lot, getting a lot of experience with um, the editorial process that I wouldn't at a larger company. Um, then uh, after, after Bishop Books um, kind of went under, um, I moved over to like a more formal position at Oxford University Press, um, which is a, a, a university press that does not only textbooks, but sort of like high-minded um, uh, trade books. But I was in the textbook division and that's where I learned what production editorial was. Um, I had not one, but two scary bosses there. Um, I was only there for about a year. Um, and then I moved on to um, Hearst Magazines, um, where I worked on custom magazines, very similar to what I'd done at Bishop Books. Um, and uh, I was there for about three years before I got laid off, which was horrifying and helpful at the same time. Um, after uh, being uh, a freelancer for, a freelancer slash unemployed person for about five months, I was hired at McGraw-Hill Professional Books. Um, and I, as a uh, editor, um, a senior editing supervisor, which is also like a production editorial person. Um, and I worked on um, business books. Uh, so everything from uh, how, to, how to play the stock market to industry professionals, like finance industry professionals, uh, memoirs, that kind of thing. And I was, during all this time, trying to get into Random House, um, interviewing um, there whenever I saw a job um, posted. Um, and after uh, four times being pulled in for interviews, I was hired as a senior production editor at the Crown Publishing Group, um, which as we mentioned before, was absorbed into Random House Publishing Group. Um, and uh, I work on all kinds of books from manuscript to um, 
uh, to finish files for a printer. Um, I also, um, after about working for about 10 years, felt comfortable in my copy editing to be a freelance copy editor and, and proofreader. Um, I work on about 10 projects a year and I teach once a year at NYU, um, the class about copy editing and proofreading and fact checking. Um, and I've been at Random House for almost 13 years. So the book business, um, you may have heard print was dead or dying, it is not. Um, you can see these numbers here uh, in 2020, uh, 750 million um, units. It's our biggest year over year increase since 2010. Um, it was an 8.2% increase in sales, which is giant um, for the book um, industry. My particular division, at Random House, we outpaced our budget by something like 30%, which is unheard of. Um, ebook sales still strong. Um, over my career at Random House, I've watched ebooks go from a million dollar a year revenue to now uh, more than $500 million um, dollars, um, in revenue for just six months of, of 2020. Um, during the pandemic, people have been buying books. Um, audio, it's our darling. Um, audiobooks have bloomed in the last couple of years. When I first started working at Random House, the first five years, maybe one or two books had an audiobook component to it. Now, almost everything um, gets an audiobook um, produced for it. Um, in 2019, $1 billion. Um, so the business is doing well. Um, it's still a smallish um, industry, um, so there aren't a ton of positions available, but we do at Random House, at, at Penguin Random House, have 30 entry level um, openings currently on the site, um, which is a lot. Uh, and we've also won Pulitzer Prizes. In 2017, we won four, including one that came out of the group I work with, um, uh, a uh, nonfiction book called Evicted uh, by Ma uh, Matthew Desmond. Wonderful, wonderful book. So Ping Random House specifically. Uh, in 2013, uh, the two rivals, the two giant rivals of the, of the publishing industry um, got together. We never thought this would ever happen. We never even dreamed of it. Um, so Penguin, a uh, standalone company owned by a British firm called Pearson and Random House, um, uh, which is owned by Bertelsmann, which is a German company, they merged. Um, now we have 300 imprints worldwide. Um, Bertelsmann now owns 100% of the business. Pearson is no longer uh, a partner. Um, and Mid-pandemic, uh, I think this was last summer, um, Random House uh, uh, engaged to purchase Simon & Schuster from Viacom CBS. So we were all pretty fatigued. And usually it's uh, uh, an, an announcement like this is like earth shattering to us, but we haven't really been able to absorb it. But I think when we're back in the office, um, we'll be able to like wrap our heads around, we own Simon & Schuster now, very strange. Um, so other big uh, book publishers, it's not just about Penguin Random House. Um, so check out Macmillan, um, Hachette and HarperCollins. And within those, um, within those giant companies, you'll recognize names that you've seen on the, the spines of books like Farrar, Strauss and Dro or Little Brown and Company. Those two imprints are owned by, um, by a couple of these companies here. FSG is with Macmillan and um, Little Brown is with Hachette. Um, Harper Collins has William Morrow, which is a famous book, cookbook publisher and uh, main competitor of Clarkson Potter, the imprint that I work with. Um, so don't discount these guys and or these guys. So these other players, minor as they are, they are still um, a, a good place to work. Um, Hot Mifflin, Norton, that the place, yes, the place that, that uh, produces those giant brick size anthologies you have to buy for your English classes. Um, Wiley, Scholastic, which is mainly a children's and young adult publisher. Springer is like a science publisher. 
and McGraw Hill Education, which is kind of the place that I used to work um, when it was called McGraw Hill Professional, kind of morphed into McGraw Hill Education. Um, and there are so many university presses um, to, to investigate. Um, I worked at Oxford University Press um, and, and the list goes on. Um, you know, don't discount these places, even, you know, the big 12, including Penn State has a university press um, where you can go and learn how to, how to make a book. So all of these places, especially the larger ones, in particular, the, the place that I work, um, PRH, is composed um, of divisions. So within PRH, we have um, these six divisions. So Random House um, Publishing Group is the division I work with. Um, and then we have, we have two different, um, uh, we have two different children's groups. Um, we have audio, which is its own division, it's its own thing, and Knopf Doubleday. Um, these divisions are kind of their own kingdoms with their own big boss or publisher person. And within them, they have the same departments. So each division has these departments um, and singular to each division. So every division has an editorial department and those editors only acquire books for, the, for that division. So make sure you know where you're gonna work when you apply for jobs. Um, like which, which division you're gonna work in, um, a, a, aside from like what department you're gonna be in. So these um, eight uh, sections occur in every division. There's some overlap in sales. Some salespeople will sell for different, um, a couple of different divisions, but mostly um, these groups appear um, in each division as their own little group. And this is what um, a typical division looks like. Um, this is the big team. So at the top is the publisher, that's the boss, that's the visionary. Um, and then this blue section here is kind of the directors. So they all report to the publisher. Um, that's kind of the, the top, like a, you know, after 20 years of working or more, like you become a director of a department, um, you could, maybe find yourself not doing so much work on a particular book that you used to love doing. You're more managing people, you're managing processes. Um, and as we move on to this orange row here, uh, it's more of a, uh, like a middle manager process group who th there's the people like redefine processes and hire people and um, kind of uh, hold the bag when something goes wrong. Um, these are our big problem solvers. And then this blue group, which is where I am, um, are all kind of like mid-career people. And down at the bottom, you see the, the red, the, these red posts are um, entry-level people. So managing editorial assistant, production editorial assistant, um, studio assistant for the art department, um, editorial assistants for, edit, for the editorial department and publishing assistant who helps the, um, the associate publisher and the publisher. Um, so within Random House Publishing Group, we do um, 16 plus imprints um, and we're segmented into two areas. So again, make sure you know where you're gonna work. Um, uh, there is a non-illustrated section which comp comprises the, um, the reading books. So, um, Everything that's uh, nonfiction, um, sort of hard hitting topical nonfiction to um, any kind of um, any kind of novel you can think of um, happens in the the non illustrated world of the Random House Publishing Group. Um, and over where I am in the illustrated group, um, it's all books that deal with um, uh, lifestyle cooking, um, some pop culture stuff, heavily illustrated. Um, we do a lot of, um, I don't like to say diets, but ways to eat um, books. Um, so I'm mentioning the word imprint. So, so um, what an imprint is, is the identifying um, a characteristic that represents the type of book you're holding. So start to notice the, um, the imprints on the, the spines of your, of your books. 
um, and you can um, research like what other books are published under that imprint and see if those capture your imagination or not. So I thought we'd go through the types of positions within each division that you could possibly go after. So to become an editor, first you have to be an editorial assistant. So that's the first title um, you would get on your path to being an, a book editor. Um, these people are organized, tech savvy, good grammar and writing skills. They learn quickly, they have really good communication skills and they're always asking questions. Um, they're really hyper aware of what they don't know. They know what they don't know and they wanna find out. The best editors I've worked with um, have an understanding of the editorial process from acquiring the book to the printing of the book. Um, they have a point of view about good storytelling. They're always willing to learn new skills and they're always striving to, to tell a better story, um, to serve their readers, and they're awesome at relationship building. So one editor um, I know uh, prepared this little um, paragraph um, as she moved from an editorial assistant job to an assistant editor job where she's actually now acquiring um, books. And this is how specific um, you need to be when you become an editor. No one's going to tell you um, what kind of books you should acquire and you shouldn't acquire every book that an agent pitches you. So this young woman um, has very specific, um, as you can see, um, interests um, and it kind of focuses her work and um, and the types of uh, stories she, um, she edits. So production editorial, what is this? Um, I didn't know what it was when I was um, in school. I didn't even know what it was until I got that job at Oxford University Press. Um, it's sort of the in-between. It lives in this kind of murky, detail heavy, super grammar nerdy place between when the manuscript is written and the book is published. So we deal with all the copy editing and the details and the proofreading. So your first title in this area of publishing would be either um, production editorial assistant or assistant production editor. Um, definitely obsessed with details, um, list makers, um, deep knowledge, deep knowledge of grammar and usage. Um, if you want to become an editor, you don't have to be like a grammar maven, but in production editorial, you do. Um, again, tech savvy, even, even more so than if you wanted to go into editorial. Uh, good time management skills, um, strong written and verbal communications, especially um, uh, the written communications because you're constantly emailing editors and freelancers and trying to um, get your points across. Um, uh, you need a basic knowledge of copy editing and proofreading. The best production editors are known as like eagle-eyed people who like see typos on a stop sign. You know, um, they're quick learners. They ask questions. Um, so curious um, and this is a behind the scenes role and you have to accept that, that that is like where you are. You're not talking to authors, you're not going to lunch with agents um, often, like none of those people even know who you, who you are um, and you have to be okay with that, being a behind the scenes player. So managing editorial. Um, at some places managing editorial and production editorial are one department. Um, since we're a little bigger, we have um, two separate um, departments. So we have a managing editor and we have a director of production editorial. So the managing editorial people, they are the schedulers. They tell you as an editor, if it's possible to publish this book that you've just acquired in April, if it's possible to get it out in the fall. Um, they solve all kinds of problems. They take a lot of heat. Um, and uh, they keep everything moving smoothly. In this world, your first job is managing editorial assistant. Again, details, you need to be diplomatic, 
You have to be a really good problem solver. There's like no running away from problems. You face them head on and you solve them. Um, you, again, asking questions, um, a good basic knowledge of um, the editorial process. A lot of managing editors used to be editors or production editors. So they've got this foundation of like, they know what happens next in the process. Um, and they're always working to improve the process. Like no moss grows on these stones. They are um, never content with um, the status quo of how things are, are going and are always pushing us to make things um, more uh, efficient. So production, um, these are unsung uh, professionals. Um, they manage um, the typesetting and the photo retouching and everything related to printing and binding process, including purchasing the paper um, for the book um, and uh, dealing with the printers when there's delays. Um, or a problem. They go on press, they look at um, uh, they look at covers and jackets while they're on press. We don't really go on press to look at interiors of books, um, but definitely the exteriors and a production manager will do that. So to get into production, um, you'd be a production assistant first. Um, again, details, good problem solving. You have to love books um, as an object. Um, be interested in the art and design of books. Um, again, strong communication skills. And you, you see a theme here. Um, tech savvy, another theme, um, and good at time management. And the best production managers never miss a deadline. Um, and they're masters in Photoshop, especially in the area that I work in where there are hundreds of photos um, in almost every book that I work on. And you know, from someone's skin tone down to um, a, a blemish on a on a uh, on a napkin in a in a photo, it needs to be um, perfect. Uh, we even changed a set of chopsticks to a fork recently um, in a in a in a picture, and the production manager um, got that done for us. Marketing and publicity, if you're outgoing, if you're like a customer facing type person, um, this, uh, this er these two areas could be for you. Again, like a lot of places combine these two functions. Since we're larger, we have separate departments um, and they write press releases. They arrange for media placement, whether it's on a TV show or in a magazine or an online article. Um, they organize author events and tours, even during a pandemic. Uh, their job did not stop. They immediately pivoted to uh, doing online events um, with our authors. They'll also coach authors on, um, you know, how to use Twitter, um, how to be um, present on Instagram, that kind of thing. So the first, um, the first uh, a job you would get in either one of these areas is an assistant, publicity assistant or marketing assistant. Um, you need to be organized, outgoing, definitely not a wallflower. Um, thinking outside of the lines all the time and strong written and, and verbal um, communication skills. Um, and have really great relationship building skills. It's not just about networking, it's about um, getting to know people and having um, deep contacts. They need to understand every aspect of um, the publishing process. The, the best marketing and publicity people understand the challenges that someone like, like, like me faces um, in getting a book out on time. Um, they understand what it is to have a printing delay, um, not just, you know, laser focused on like, I need the books on the 10th, you know, so they understand and are able to explain to authors and to media outlets, like why we don't have something or, or why something is delayed. Um, and they're always seeing new ways of promoting, um, not only the upcoming titles, but the backlist, you know, we, we don't forget about books once they're published. And not every book has the opportunity to live on, like say, um, uh, um, something like Becoming, 
um, you know, that hardly needs any, um, any promotion, but there are plenty of backlist titles that our marketers um, dig up and um, sort of reintroduce to the public and it's pretty impressive. So audiobooks, as I said, it's a darling. So have you heard about audio? It is growing and it is amazing. And I would jump over there in a second, given the opportunity. Um, it's not just about recording a book um, you know, verbatim from the, uh, the printed book. It's not just about getting an actor or a, an author to come in and sit in a booth and, and read their book. Um, they edit the manuscripts to be a little shorter, to be more appropriate for the audio. Um, so we need editors, we need managing editors, we need production managers um, for audio because um, it's kind of like its own little publishing company. And they're also doing now um, original material. So why do this? Um, definitely love of storytelling. It's a profession. It's so much more than a job. Um, the variety is so interesting. No two authors are alike. No two books are alike. Um, it's really um, it just if you love moving from one thing to the next, um, it's it's a great place to be. Um, flexibility. I mean, it took a pandemic, but um, but we now have very flexible work hours. Um, I am living in State College right now and doing my job as I would if I were in New York. Um, and there are tons of opportunities to grow and to innovate. Everyone within the company loves to listen to new ideas about um, mining that backlist or um, you know, new author type opportunities to promote their book. So where are the job listings? Um, so go to websites of all the houses and um, university presses that I mentioned. And if you can, you know, set up job alerts. So you're not constantly like making an appointment to go back to the site to see um, when they post a job. Um, try Publishers Marketplace. Um, there's a, there's a, a small job board, but there's kind of interesting um, a post there, you know, there could be a post for like from an author looking for an assistant. That's kind of a great job. There are also posts from literary agencies, which is an interesting route to go down. Um, and on LinkedIn, there's tons of job postings on there and you can kind of plunk in your, your preferences and, um, you know, you can receive, you know, daily or weekly um, listings. So what should you do now while you're still a student to set yourself up if you want to get into this? Get involved with publication. Learn Word. I can't stress this enough. Learn Microsoft Word. I know Google Docs is beloved and it's free, but it has. we do not use that to do our work um, until Google Docs starts talking to our, our uh, desktop publishing program. Um, we're not going to use it. So Word feeds into InDesign. If anyone is familiar with that, we can talk about that a little bit if you're completely unaware. But um, Word is our main, um, our main uh, word processing program. Um, so improve your writing and your knowledge and grasp of grammar um, is really important. Um, take an extra class, go to a writing center, um, whatever you can do to, to pump up those skills. It's really good because no one's going to teach you once you get into the job um, environment. Um, ask someone to read your resume and cover letters before you send them out, especially if you're feeling shaky about your spelling and stuff. Um, it really does take a village to get a book out. It, sh it never is never one person's responsibility to find all the errors. So um, oh, else's feedback. Terry, I apologize. I think you yep. froze a little bit there. Would you mind uh, going back to your last point? Yep. Thanks. Yep, we'll do. Okay, my back. Well, yep, um, you're back. <laughs> good, good. Okay, so I asked. 
someone to read your resume and cover letters. You know, it it really does take more than one person to uh, to get something perfect, and that also applies to a resume and a cover letter. Um, so don't think you've seen all of your errors, you'll be surprised to see what you missed. I'm sure there's some typo in this thing that I've been showing you today. Um, so it's really important, Get some, as, as painful as it might be to show someone else like your cover letter, just uh, break down that barrier and do it. Um, get an internship and ask a ton of questions while you're there. Um, even if you think it's a quote dumb question, you know, it's not. I mean, even just asking the person who you're working with, how did you get where you are? Like that's, um, that will give you some information. And also keep reading. Um, the best um, professionals I work with are ones that read all the time. The, um, the copy editors I work with, the best ones are like voracious readers um, and have been their entire life. Um, if you wanna work with books, you've gotta you know, read them and know what's out there and know what you like. I think that's it. Yep, okay, I'll stop sharing. Awesome, thank you so right. much, Terry. As somebody who, I mean, I'm not, I was not aware of the intricacies of the <laughs> book publishing field. This was so well organized oh, and really good. informative. Um, I'm glad. So I know a couple of questions came in the Q and A. Um, so oh, the first one is from Megan, who asked, um, "What types of internships do you like? Your organization does your organization offer, and are there any virtual opportunities, and maybe where to find them if you do offer them for undergrads?" Mm -hmm. um, Penguin Random House does have an internship program and they do it in a fall, a spring and a summer. Um, this summer we have virtual interns and those slots are already taken from the people who were supposed to come into the office last summer. So they were already chosen by the time we had to lock down and get out. Um, so uh, they've been on hold for a year, so they get to come in virtually. Um, yeah, so I think the fall interns are going to be virtual. We're hiring someone in my department who is virtual. Like we've hired several people within my division who we've actually never met in person. So yeah, so check out the careers section of penguinrandomhouse.com. It's down at the bottom of the, uh, the opening page. So this kind of thing, and it says careers, get in there. And there's a, I think there's a tab for internships in there, so. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we have another question um, from Claire. So she says, if someone is interested in editing, but isn't sure what specific type they want to go into, what level entry level positions would you recommend? Uh, further, does the entry level editing position significantly significantly influence your career path, or is it is there room to move positions once you kind of enter that specific division? Mm -hmm. um, definitely, there's room to move. Um, I think investigating before you apply, like what that particular um, division or place or publishing company um, publishes is really important. I mean, everyone I know is hard, everyone wants a job, but be choosy. Um, really just don't jump at something because it's an editorial assistant job. And that's, that is an entry, that's the entry level point if you wanna edit books. Um, and, uh, you know, ask questions during the interview about like, what exactly, what are you working on right now? Editor who's interviewing me, you know, like, what are you, what are you working on and what's good and what's coming up? Um, and I think in terms of like, not knowing what you want to edit, like just kind of mind your own interests. Um, you know, I grew up dancing, I um, grew up cooking um, and baking and stuff. You know, I never thought I could 
parlay, you know, baking and cooking into a, a career. And that's, you know, short of becoming a chef, you know, but all of that knowledge I have is, is put to work on a daily basis. Um, so kind of think about what your passion points are. You know, we, we don't really do them anymore, but we have a lot of craft books. Um, we used to do a lot of knitting and jewelry making um, books. Um, they're kind of just all sitting in our backlist and, you know, are, are like really good sellers. So we're not producing new ones, but um, yeah. So like you could, you could acquire books dealing with uh, sewing and, um, you know, crocheting and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. So just kind of mine, mine, yeah, like mine your own interests. Um, and I, I would say, like, I know that everyone is kind of enamored with young adult fiction. Um, and maybe the things that Maybe like that's the line I would draw with like, like things that entertain me outside of work, you know, and I want to make it my work. Like it's a really hard section to get into. Um, and I would definitely like maybe do, try to set up an informational interview with someone who acquires that young adult fiction to really find out what it's about. Um, a lot of my students at NYU want to um, want to be young adult fiction editors, and I sort of cringe because I feel like it's a very crowded field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's really good information, um, and those informational interviews are so invaluable when gathering that type of knowledge around specific areas and fields. So, um, great, thank sure. you. Um, so Albara has the next question of, do you have any favorite books for improving your editing skills? Um, for do. instance, like a Chicago style guide or something similar. Yeah, I do. I have a ton. Um, well, I Chicago manual style is like, it depends on if that's the house style guide that your, your company follows. Um, so yeah, I think most book companies follow Chicago. So definitely have Chicago, you know, in your periphery and like, don't ignore it until someone says, please edit this according to Chicago, like come, become familiar with it. But in terms of like figuring out like what's good prose, like that's a whole different thing. So the, the book came out, I think it's almost two years ago now, it's called Dryer's English. Um, and I'm going to wheel over and grab a copy of it here. If you can, uh, uh, I don't have it within reach, but Dryer's English by Benjamin Dreyer. Um, and uh, it's a random house book. And Ben is our copy chief. Um, Dryer's English. Yeah. Um, that's it. And uh, I think if, uh, that might, there might be an E between the R and the Y there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's called the utterly correct guide to like write better writing and style. Um, he has decades of experience. Um, it's not, um, you know, it's not grammar class, um, but he points out things that most writers, you know, do wrong. Um, he has a great section on these sort of throat clearing over use words so very actually you know all that stuff that you're just doing without knowing um that you can squeeze out of your writing so dryer's english for sure definitely chicago for style and like kind of getting your head wrapped around things like capitalization and hyphenation um there's another book called the Subver subversive copy editor um, that's really good. Uh, um, those are my two, those are my two go-tos in terms of like something that's readable um, and usable and apl applicable to what, to becoming a better writer, the subversive copy editor and Dreyer's English. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, 
we have a bunch of questions that have come in the Q and A. Um, so the next okay. one is from Claire. Um, so what advice would you give someone who primarily writes poetry regarding pursuing a career in publishing? Well, I would say continue, write, continue writing poetry for sure. Um, don't stop writing um, if you become an editor. Um, I think it's tough going if you want to be an editor who only acquires poetry. Um, I just don't think that exists. Um, but we have at Random House in the last couple of years, probably three books of poetry um, we've produced. So that's good. Um, so it does exist, but I think if you're a poet um, and you also wanna be a book editor, I would say keep writing and then figure out um, a genre of books that you want to edit. Um, I um, work with a production editor who's also a poet. He's done, he's published two books of his own, you know, so um, he does my the little nitsy detail work um, that we do. Um, and then he writes poetry and publishes it. He does readings and stuff. It's cool. So I think don't stop writing because it's a different thing than editing. Um, awesome. Thank you. Um, so uh, another one um, from Claire. So what level of education or degree makes job candidates stand out as competitive in the publishing world? If there is one, if that, if that does make a difference. Yeah, I'm going to say it doesn't make a difference. Um, I mean, you definitely want a college degree. Um, I think a liberal arts undergraduate education helps develop your critical thinking and your writing skills and your sort of worldview. So I think that's the value, but I don't think you need, you don't need a graduate degree. That's really helpful. That's actually a question that I often get when I'm doing career coaching with, with students. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Um, so another question from uh, Kayla. Um, so in your experience, what way, what is the best way to establish trust between an author and an editor? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. I think being, um, being an authentic partner, like I, I think there's pressure on new editors to like grab, grab an author no matter what. So I think choosing the right project will um, help you with relationship building. So if you're just like shoved into a room with, a, with an author, you don't believe in that person's writing, you don't believe in that person's um, subject matter, it's the, the trust can't, uh, can't be established. I think you need to believe in their material and their talent um, so that goes back to my original point, find out what you want to bring to the world and then the, and then find the authors who, um, and be open to authors bringing stuff to you who are, are going to do that. Um, I think be, just being an authentic person um, is really, really important. Um, and, you know, being honest. Um, and that's where knowing the entire editorial process helps an editor because that the editor is able to explain to the author like um, after the contract is signed and the manuscript needs to be written and developed like there's all kinds of things that happen between that point and when that that author is holding their finished book and if an editor doesn't know what that process is they're not going to they're going not going to have good credibility with their author because the author is going to be asking questions, and um, if the author doesn't think you know how a book is published or like gets a whiff of like this person has no idea what they're doing, um, it's that's that makes things kind of shaky. So definitely know the entire process, be an authentic person, and you know acquire things that you love not because you have to. That's really great. I love that authenticity and how that really feeds into this industry, Terry. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, great. 
Um, so a question from Harry um, is, are all entry level positions made equal? Um, would you recommend one over another? Oh my gosh. Um, it really depends on what you see yourself doing in the future. I think it's easiest for an editorial assistant to move into any of those other areas I was talking about. You know, so an editorial assistant after two years could move over to production editorial, could move over to marketing and publicity. Um, I think it's harder for someone, um, say like a production assistant to move over to editorial um, or a, it's, I mean, it's happened before. I mean, it's happened like a managing editorial assistant could move over to editorial pretty seamlessly. I have never seen, I only heard of a couple of people who moved from production editorial over to editorial, but this is an industry issue. Like the siloing of your areas and your skills, you know, it, but the most flexible area to move around from starting point wise is probably editorial. Um, but yeah, it's a good point. It's it, And we're trying to combat that um, and making the industry uh, less siloed, less, um, less rigid um, in terms of like, no, you were hired as a production assistant. I don't care how, you know, how you know eagle-eyed you are and finding typos you know we can't move you over to production editorial like that's really like how strict things have been um so yeah it's it's changing but still um i think if you want are unsure i think a good starting point is editorial assistant and then get to know people and and then again relationship building like if you um, have friends in marketing um, or friends in production editorial, like that relationship will help um, break down the barriers for sure. If you find you want to move over, I hope that helps. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, Terry. Yeah. Um, so kind of moving back into the, the actual search for these types of positions, um, Julie had a question. Um, thanks, Julie. Um, are, what are your thoughts on the site of bookjobs.com for leads for our students? I don't know if you've ever heard of that site before. It's, it's one that I've recommended to our students use who are interested in publishing, but any mm -hmm. recommendation for, I know you had mentioned a different website um, yeah. earlier in your presentation that has helped mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm clueless. Uh, I, I think uh, Publishers Marketplace mm -hmm. um, has an interesting like collection of quirky jobs on it. Um, but other than that, and like the, for, um, for all also other like quirky jobs, like just um, like copy editing you know, just like as a copy editor at a, at a retail brand or something like LinkedIn is like interesting for that. Um, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked at book jobs. Is it, did you say bookjobs.com? I don't even know what it is. I'm sorry. Uh. That's okay. I mean, I think that that's good. <laughs> there are so many of these um, different databases out there that are posting different jobs. So hmm. um, the one that you had mentioned as well as book jobs, um, I know I've worked with students who have gotten different opportunities mm. through there. So that's um, definitely helpful. Um, so kind of going off of this, uh, Amanda has a question of what advice do you have for graduating seniors who are looking to, for jobs in the publishing industry? Yeah, well, definitely start. I mean, get your resume ready, like have it ready to go and have the most relevant experience on it. Like you don't have have to list every job you've ever had, but definitely like cherry pick stuff that, you know, might uh, appeal in an editorial or book atmosphere, you know, um, definitely some good cover letters, um, you know, have them ready to be tailored to a particular job title or a particular publisher, um, just have them ready, like don't see it yeah, just have them ready to go. 
Um, and I think just like setting those alerts for jobs, like just start like looking at job descriptions and, and kind of taking your own temperature of like, how do I feel about this? Um, yeah, definitely like looking widely. Um, I, I think zeroing in on like, I must work at, you know, X company is not going to be great. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just like looking widely and like, and even if it's like an editorial position at like a healthcare company or just, or a museum, um, just something to get you started with, with real life skills um, is important. So I think searching widely, um, you know, even like if you wanna work in editorial, like just kind of go outside of the lines of book publishing and see where you can get some experience um, actually working with text is good. That's really helpful. Um, thanks so much. Um, so we had one that came through the chat from Jade. Um, and so I, I really like this question. In your experience as an editor, what is an, an achievement that you are really proud of in, through your career? Oh, oh gosh. Um, I can't pick just one thing. I'm just so happy to love what I do every day. Um, and I think that's, I think if there's a crowning achievement, it's that I'm able to do something I really enjoy doing every day. Um, and it's appreciated, you know? So I really love that. I mean, I've worked on like my most recent, like, like high profile book was Ina Garten's um, Modern Comfort Food, which came out in October. And it was so difficult to work on and the schedule was so horrible, but I have like, I have, you know, made her food for 20 years, you know? So it was really like, whoa, um, it was a cool thing. And, you know, to work on Martha Stewart books and to work on the not, uh, wedding books and, uh, to work on books that change people's hearts and minds, you know, aside from these like lifestyle ladies, like I've worked on, um, memoirs and, uh, like topical nonfiction that, um, are kind of books that I call like books for people who don't read books, you know, people who like would rather watch a news program about this topic, you know, but this author has made this topic so interesting that you are willing to invest the time to read about, you know, uh, a hospital that was like, uh, one of the, my favorite books I've worked on is about a hospital in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina that was basically like walled off by water for five days and no one could get to them. And this reporter worked on the book for like 10 years. Um, and it changes, that book changed the way I saw healthcare companies. It changed the way I view healthcare, like as in like being in a hospital and what, um, you know, doctors and nurses do. So like it's working on those types of books that really change like the DNA of how someone thinks. So it's just really a privilege. That's amazing, Terry. Thank you so much. And I think that that's actually, I know we're getting to um, our 115 mark and yeah, there's still like a couple a of, uh, yeah, I know that. I think that that was a really good uh, question to end on. Um, I know we still have a couple of open questions in the, uh, in the Q and A. Um, so if it's okay, Terry, um, what I'll do is I'll get their information and send it to you so they can uh, ask you those follow-up questions. Definitely. Would that be okay? I'd love it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for your time and expertise. Thank you. This has been such a, a privilege to, to chat oh, with good. you this afternoon. Oh, um, like I said, I learned a ton about the publishing industry from somebody good. outside the field. So um, I really appreciate your, your time and energy that you Great. spent here today. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so right. glad you enjoyed it. Sorry for the choppy, choppy internet. I don't know. You know. Don't worry about it. Oh my gosh, we're all in that Zoom universe right now. So um, we really appreciate it. And it, it was pretty much fine the whole time. So um, great.
Um, awesome. So um, for those who are in attendance, I will send out Terry's contact information um, so you can follow up with any questions that you may have. Um, and otherwise, have a great rest of your afternoon. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Bye. Thanks so much. Take care. You too. Bye.